everyone. We are so glad that you're all here. And I'm ready. <laughs> are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Oh, come on. Are you ready? Ready. Yeah. Ready for what? We don't know. <laughs> you. But we're ready. We are ready for Jesus. Right? And we're on a path, and we're on this great path, path to try to go to Jesus, right? Yeah. That's right. And as women, what do we try to do? We take on the world, and we try to carry everything that we have with us, right? <laughs> do you think even Jesus could get through all of this? <laughs> I'm not so sure. Because <laughs> he's asking for an open heart, right? And Sister Mary Rose and I joke all the time, our, our goal is to try and save the world, um, but you can't save the world when you're trying to carry the world on your shoulders, right? <laughs> so you have to drop and let the Lord open you up. You've got to take one thing off at a time. <laughs> if you can, figure out which to take off next. <laughs> It's a process. Yeah. It's a big process to try and let yourself be vulnerable. It's a process to let all of that stuff, because you don't know what's kind of sticking in what direction. Sometimes you may have to ask for help to get undressed. So you put all of our baggage, that's what we did today upstairs. We put all of our baggage down, right? We're putting all of our stuff down for the Lord, for Him, to be able to work on our lives. You know, we have the kids, we've got the job, we've got the world, we have the state of the world, we have whatever else, all of the junk that we try to carry, that we try to take for the Lord. I'm supposed to love my neighbor, right? So I'm supposed to do all of this stuff for everybody, right? With the exception, this is where the, the Gospels can get very, very conflicting, and I have this as well. You, you know, you're supposed to go out and you're supposed to help everybody, but you're, all, you're supposed to love your neighbor as, as, as yourself. And so, where does that put us? In a bind. A lot of times, we get put into a bind, because we want to love everybody, but if we're so bound down with all this stuff, how far do you think we're going to get? Not if I get out the front door, then I'd probably fall down. Because it's just too much. We can't do it on our own. We need God's grace. We need his help. We need his ability to give us the grace. Because alone, we do not have the power. With Jesus, we have all power. Uh, and, and Father Josh can attest to this. You know, as human persons, we have no power. But with Jesus Christ and his ordination, he has the power to confect the Eucharist. But without, just as he is a, as a person, as a, as a man of his own, he doesn't have that power. But through Jesus Christ, he has been given that power. And we have the ability to help other people through love of neighbor. And that's what this is all about tonight, um, is about how the healing of love of neighbor. What does that mean? You know, and the Samaritans, the, the story about the Samaritan, they ask that question, who is my neighbor? My neighbor could be my sister sitting next to me. My neighbor could be the homeless woman that came to the house yesterday. My neighbor could be uh, a person that I don't even know who's placed on my heart to pray for someone that's in prison. We don't know who our neighbor is per se. Sometimes we're fortunate enough to have a one-on-one -on -one and being able to really meet that person and be able to have a conversation with them and really get to know them. Sometimes that person might be just someone that we smiled at as they walked by and we have no idea how that their lives were changed. We went to a um, to a benefit. Uh, was it last night? <laughs> the night before? <laughs> I must have been Thursday night. We went to a benefit, and one of the sisters of life was talking about um, an event that they experienced, 
And this was really um, telling to me. So they do a lot of stuff with post-aborted women. And they had this retreat and where they take these rocks and they write out all of the different things that have been weighing this person down. You know, so guilt, shame, anger. And at the end of all of those, this retreat, they put all the rocks and boulders in this big tub. And then they usually take them to a lake and they dispose of them out in the lake. And this one time, they didn't have time to do it right away. So several days later, they go over to the rock, to the, to the lake. And they're taking all these rocks and they start throwing anger into the lake and start throwing this other, all these different rocks. And these two women walk by. One was pregnant, and one said, you know, I'm a, I'm a Protestant minister. It's very nice to meet you. And the two of them help them take the rocks and start throwing the rocks into the pool, into the lake. And they both start crying, and they walk away. They didn't think much about it. They thought, oh, isn't that beautiful? No. And several days later, several months later, they run into Costco. And we, we know what it's like to run to. We have our, our grocery ministry. You know, you're walking through the ministry, you're walking through the grocery store, and everyone's like, oh, can you please pray for us, please? Can you please pray for us here? And we're praying for people right in the middle of Hannaford's Lyle, you know? Um, so this, uh, this man comes up to, to one of the sisters and said, would you please come to my parish? Sure. This is another Protestant minister. So, you know, can you please come to my parish? Sure, no problem. So they come, and this man talks about his... Two daughters that, you know, one was in ministry and one was pregnant, and my grandson Peter is like the uh, apple of my eye. And the sister was sitting there saying, Oh my goodness. The woman that they met, the Protestant minister, was his daughter, and the woman that was pregnant was his daughter. And the two of them were walking, and the woman that was the minister was trying to speak to her sister not to have an abortion. And it was at that time that they were throwing the rocks into the lake. Into the lake. And they said, that's what prevented her from having an abortion. And the, pre, the, the pastor, the, man, the male pastor said, that that, son, that grandson of mine is the apple of my eye. We have no idea how God works through people. In love of neighbor. When we have no, no idea. And so when we ask ourselves, who is our neighbor? It's all of the body of Christ. We're all deserving of Jesus' love. But we have to be willing and able to accept his love first. Because we do not have the capacity nor the ability to love as Jesus loves unless we understand that we are loved first. And how do we know that we are loved first? He died on the cross for us. And I said, I would sit there for years and say, yeah, well, yeah, so? <laughs> you know, what does that mean? Like, I, it's so beyond my expectations and my understanding that, you know, I don't, I can't grasp that all the time, you know? Um, and when I understand that Jesus gave his body and blood for us, and we receive it in the Eucharist, it's one of the biggest graces that we can receive. As women, our, our biggest asset is our ability to receive. Although the, we're the biggest doers in the world, <laughs> I, know, I can attest, and so can we, attest that we love to do things for other people. But our biggest vocation is the ability to receive. We receive the love of Jesus. We receive the gift of life. We receive the ability to be able to go out and then be able to be of help to other people. And so we put down our baggage for a reason because the baggage prevents us from actually doing what God wants for us. If we're weighed down with all of that other stuff, we can't, we can't hear, we can't listen, because we're exhausted. How many people are exhausted because they've just got so much stuff on their plates, you know? And that's, that's not what the Lord wants. He wants us to be joy-filled and be able to have the, the energy and the vibrance of life and the joy to be able to say, yes, I'm his. 
And that's what all of this is about today, is giving you the ability to step back and say, what am I holding on to that, Lord, you really don't want me to have? But what is it that you do want me to have so I can go out and proclaim your love, peace, and happiness out there? Does that make sense? You with me on this? Yes. Okay. So we look at um, how many people have saw a Fiddler on the Roof? Yeah, a long, long time ago, probably. And um, is it Tibia? Is it Tibia? Tibia. His famous question to his wife, do you love me? And what was her answer? I do your laundry. <laughs> do you love me? I cook for you. Do you love me? I've had your children. What else do you want me to say? You know? Do you love me? That's right. That's right. I have sacrificed myself for you. I love you. I have given you everything that I have. Without that vocabulary, but that's what she was saying, at least my understanding of that, to the best I can, best I can understand, is that what she was saying. I have sacrificed myself for you. Put that crucifix in here. Um, over there. Oh, that's what he did for us. He sacrificed himself for us. And he gave us everything. So one of our ways to be able to share our love with our neighbor is our corporal and spiritual works of mercy. Feed the sick, clothe the naked, visit the infirmed, saying prayers for those that have died, visit, you know, go, go to prisons, write letters to people. I can't tell you how often people have said, uh, for those that write little notes to people, people don't get mail anymore. But when people get mail and handwritten notes, it is the most touching thing to them. So if you have not written a letter to somebody, I'm going to challenge you today to write three letters to somebody in the next two weeks and tell them how much you appreciate them. You're going to have someone crying at your door, for sure. That's, that, I'm, going to, I'm going to commission you on that. I'm going to challenge you for that. Three letters. And it, it's not just, hi, I miss you. It's, hi, this is me. I appreciate you. And this is why I appreciate you. We're giving to somebody. That's the way that we can help spread this to other people. So as we re we're able as women to unite our sufferings with the suffering of Christ. We bear a lot of burdens with family, with friends, with other, with other relationships that we as women have. And we're very sensitive and we hold a lot of things in our hearts. And that's what the Blessed Mother says. You know, I hold all these things into my heart. And it's her pierced heart that allows all the thoughts of many to be presented. And so because of what we hold into our hearts, we offer them to her. She's already done that for us. Her heart is already pierced and open for us to give our stuff to her. And she's able to then take it and give it to her son and watch miracles happen. Watch miracles happen. When we, when we feel like we're on our knees and that there's no hope and there's nothing else left for us to do, yes, great. That's when the Holy Spirit can work and that's when Jesus has the ability to do the most. Yes? Yes. yes? yes. Okay. All right. And so as we start looking at our ability to love our neighbor, we again have to step back and look at ourselves because our own woundedness can affect how we interact with other people. So where are we jealous? Oh, they have a nice house. Oh, her hair looks so nice. She's always dressed so well. Her kids are always so well behaved. And look at my house, it's a mess, you know? <laughs> my house, my inner house is always a mess. Um, so, you know, looking at envy, jealousy, you know, the grass is never always greener. It might look like it's greener on the other side, but you never want to walk in somebody else's shoes. The ones we've been given are hard enough. You don't want to have to walk into somebody else's shoes. 
covetous, covetousness. What about that, you know? Trying to ask or, or hoard, want from what somebody else has. We have no idea why they've been given what they've been given. We've worked, we've done prayer ministry for, for years. And I can tell you from my experience, the women that come in that are, you know, their hair is totally prim and proper, they're wearing the heels, the dress is immaculate, they come in and they are sobbing because their life is so difficult. Because they can't keep the facade up anymore. You know? The Blessed Mother wants us to be real. It's through our reality and our ability to love that we can affect other people. They could really care less about the type of <laughs> shoes that I wear, but they do care whether I love them or not. You know? And whether I have time for them. Whether I'm willing to sit and have a cup of tea with somebody. Give them my time. That is the most powerful thing that we have. We have very little time today. But that's because we've got all this stuff. If COVID did anything for society or anything for us at all, we realized how overly busy we were. And what we stuffed our lives and our minds and our souls with that were not of God. How often did we need to watch TV? How often did we need to go out and want, get, go to the restaurants? How often did we need to go out and do whatever? Entertainment, all of the stuff that wasn't necessary was removed for us for two years for the most part. But we had the ability to God giving us that space. If we were willing to take it, he's giving us this space to be able to say, I want you. I want you. Because you're the one that's going to help me be able to go out and spread your love to other people. And so when we're in that suffering, and we have that difficulties, as w at least I can talk about my grandmother the most, because she was lovely, the most powerful woman, and one of the most powerful women in my life. When she was in a really bad place, she cooked and she gave food to other people. You know? <laughs> that's what we do is we get outside of ourselves and we go out and we help others. When we're in the struggling place, when we're in a difficult place, we go out and we be of service to somebody to the best we can. Sometimes we're too overwhelmed and our goal is to get down on our knees and ask for more help and peace. And so we have to understand the misconception of what it means that we are to love others because we can't love others unless we have care for ourselves too. Just like they say, you know, you put your air mask, when you're on the airplane, put your air mask on yourself first and then you put it on the people next to you. Because that's very, very important. For those that are married, your spouse is your primary relationship, not your children. Your children are not your primary relationship. Your spouse is your primary relationship. And if you are not spending enough time with your spouse, you are not loving your neighbor. Your children are an outcome of that love that you have with him. And he needs to be your primary relationship. And so, again, I challenge you, if you have not spent more than five minutes with your husband in the last three weeks, <laughs> you need to set a date with him. And you are going out, just the two of you. No grandchildren, no children, whatever. The two of you are to go out and spend time together. And whatever is best, whatever um, kind of thing that you enjoy doing together, whether it's walking down the beach, going for a picnic, you know, do something together as best as you're able. Because this is the relationship that brings you closer to Jesus, is your spousal relationship with each other. And that's a hard thing, because children want, and, and they're very important, and I'm not saying they're not important, but even as us, as sisters, when we were, <laughs> dogs count, <laughs> but they're not children. <laughs> Even we as religious have to put our apostolates aside. And we need to spend time with each other, and we need time to spend with Jesus alone. 
You know, all of that's really important. So we have the great um, examples from the Blessed Mother of the Annunciation. She's present with Jesus was conceived in her heart first before he was conceived in her womb. She read scripture. She was looking forward to him being present. She, she prayed. She was just yearning for the Messiah to be here. And so we have Jesus has to come into our hearts first. And then we're able to have him conceived in our souls. And then she goes out in the Annunciation. Then she goes out to be of service, but not before. It, you have to have that time with Jesus first. And then that then leads to the, annunciation, to the uh, visitation, to be able to go out and you hear, you know, Elizabeth, you know, the whole Elizabeth, you know, with the, um, the prayer that she says, and I'm blanking on it right now, which is horrible. But. The Magnificat. Thank you. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. So we have to put love into action, but within our capabilities. He doesn't want us to be doormats. He didn't create, a sister talked about how Jesus, the, the Father had us in his mind from the beginning of time. He created us to be unique, with great dignity, and with great love. He didn't create us to be doormats. He did not. And so we need to have the inner dignity of the woman's, the women that he created us to be. Great dignity. Because we bear life. And it's through our bodies and through our spirits and through our souls that we are able to bring new life into this world. And no other person has that ability. And so we have that great grace. Never underestimate that grace. Ever. So we cannot just be channels of God's mercy. We need to be reservoirs, an overflowing reservoir of God's mercy. We need to have it filled and overflow. Otherwise, it's just it it it's dry. It's dry. So as we, uh, we have to, again, like I said, we, we going kind of back out to the looking at ourselves. So we look at how are we envious, jealous, covetousness? How do we compare ourselves to other people? We sometimes, and I, I, I can do this unconsciously, I judge the outside of someone without knowing what's going on on the inside. And that's why we pray for everybody, because we really don't know what people are going through. And uh, at one point, I went through a very um, intense, uh, soul searching, for lack of a better word, uh, very intense soul searching. And I had to come to the understanding that when I looked at how I was afraid, all of my different faults and all the different, um, through, the, through the Ignatian exercises, looking at all my, has anyone done the Ignatian exercises here? Um, it's, it's a very big way to look at, in, at our faults and failings and our sins and the inventory. It's like an inventory of ourselves. And I had to come to understand that I'm not as good as a person as I thought I was, but I'm not as bad as a person as I thought I was. And that's a good thing. And so when I realized I was writing out my resentments about from different people, and then I had to turn that around. And I had to look at, okay, this person said that to me. And I'm really angry at them. And then I had to look at the fact that I said the exact same thing that she said to this person over here. And I really didn't mean what I said. So then I had to go back and say, well, then maybe she didn't mean what she said to me either. Like I had to give people the benefit of the doubt. You know? And that was a really big thing, to be able to step back and, and take, take myself off the cross and put myself on the ground and to know that people aren't out there to get me. That they're not out there to get me, you know? People do everything, I read this recently in this book, people do everything out of love. It just depends on what they're loving, 
you know? <laughs> Whether they're loving food, they're loving, uh, you know, um, entertainment, or they love their work, they do something out of love. It's all out of love, but it might not be directed in the right direction. So I have to give them the benefit of the doubt, you know? So I'd like to just end with a prayer. So if we can just kind of settle in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Blessed Mother, you know our hearts. You know our desires. And you know our willingness to be of service. We ask you, Blessed Mother, to come into our hearts, to give us the great grace of receptivity, to be able to be a great reservoir of the merciful love of Jesus. Without your help, we cannot be another you in this world. We are all women, and we are all here to help bring life, wholeness, and health. Give us the grace to be peacemakers where there is strife. Give us the grace to be bold when we need to stand up for the dignity of life. Give us the courage to say the name of Jesus in any and all areas of our lives. We thank you, Blessed Mother, for your heroic virtue of saying yes to bearing Jesus in your womb. Give us the grace and the ability to conceive Jesus in our hearts and to continue to love our neighbor and all those who present themselves to us, leaving our baggage at your feet so that we can undoubtedly call Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.